Hi YouTubers, Old Radio Wow here. Well, I was making space for uh, that RCA 242 console that I recently bought. I realized I hadn't done a video on this. It's not a radio. It's a silver tone phonograph of the type that's commonly referred to as a gramophone or a Victrola, neither of which it really is. A Victrola, of course, was made by the Victor Talking Machine Company. They were made from uh, 1901 to 1929 when they were bought by RCA and it became RCA Victor. That's also when uh, electric became more prevalent and, and uh, this type of phonograph, the wind-up type, were phased out. Gramophone was a more generic term that was used by a number of different makers, uh, Edison among them. And that term included uh, the cylinder players as well as the disc players. Sears started marketing phonographs in 1915 and they sold them until the late 20s when the electric models became available. You can see silver tone. Of course, uh, you know, they weren't made by Sears, just as the Silvertone radios weren't. I don't know who made this one. Uh, there isn't a model number on it anywhere. A company called Conley in uh, Minnesota made a lot of the early Silvertone phonographs, and maybe they made this one. I have no way of verifying that. I picked it up at a local antique store under a hundred dollars which are really reasonable when I went to move it I thought holy cow this thing is heavy opened up the cabinet down there and uh, there was a box of records in it this box of records a lot of them aren't in uh, really great shape but you know there, there's some really old records in here some are easily as old or older than the than the player kind of makes you wonder maybe this was you know the original owner collection there are some in here that can't be played on this phonograph the got some examples out here to show you the spindle hole on this one is much larger than the standard size spindle hole like this one you probably also thought colored discs were you know one of those things that someone thought of in the latter days of, of records well guess again <laughs> this one's on gray gray gull records go chase yourself sung by rob thomas or bob thomas oh thought, bob, thought rob thomas might be older than i thought And these are the, that's a standard 10 inch size. Here's an 8 inch on Victor Records. It's also, as the er, very early records were, is a one sided. See, no, no grooves on this side. I don't know if that light helps or hurts. And I guess it helps. Here's another early one sided record by Billy Murray, who was a 
very popular early recording artist. That's a red label, Victor. The Barefoot Trail by John McCormick. And that's a one-sided. There were also a number of these in, in the box. It's uh, in Yiddish. And from what I've read, those, those were a common subset of uh, of early recordings. I did a lot of these. You can see that the the hole is boogered up on this one. To go back to this record and the the uh, spindle hole. That's as you can see. I can fit my finger in it. Apparently, uh, some early manufacturers practically gave away the, the record player and they would uh, make their money by you having to pay a premium for the records that they that would that would work with that phonograph. This was one of those types. So what you see quite often are records like this. Where someone has drilled out by hand a standard size spindle to, to play on one of these spindle type uh, phonographs. I really wish this one hadn't been. I think it might be an interesting record. It's a national anthem march by the USS Pennsylvania Band. Would have been cool to listen to. I might try to figure out a way to listen to it yet. Anyway, got a whole box of these. Most of them are by people you would never have heard of. There, there is at least one in there by Al Jolson, but it is uh, yet another one of these that has a, a, a big spindle size record. There's a uh, ad for a silver tone phonograph. Very similar to this model. This is pretty much the original finish. I used Howard restore a finish on it. Came out pretty nice. These reproducers were kind of cheap pot metal and you can see there's some cracking. As a matter of fact there's actually a little piece missing right there. Not much you can do about that. Simple controls on these. There's a speed control. Uh, you, you would think that, uh, well, it's single, it's 78 RPM, but in actuality, I guess some of these were not recorded uniformly at 78 RPM, so there's a speed adjust on this particular phonograph. I found that. Uh, the slowest speed seems to be right about 78 and then your brake to start the turntable spinning. The needle cups, one for used needles and one for new needles. These use steel needles and uh, they are supposed to only be used for one play. Uh, the needle itself is designed to deteriorate rapidly in order to protect the record. The uh, turntable on this one is in quite good shape. Flocking's in really nice condition. Have a 
silver tone record here to listen to and it's uh give me a little kiss will ya huh a song you may may recognize although even if you don't recognize the artist who is con confidential charlie <laughs> And I've got it cranked up and ready to go, so let's give this thing a listen. Let it get up to speed. These records have no lead-in track. You just kind of have to put it on there and hope it... like the brake pads on that thing are of course there's no brake pads but you know what I mean anyway that's my silver tone phonograph the only one of this sort I have I'm not a collector of these per se but I wanted to have one you have to be very careful when you're buying these things guys um, you'll see quite a few with the external type horn that are fakes they're produced uh, in India and if you google uh, fake Victrola uh, like HMV something like that you'll you'll find all the uh, warning signs of the ones that are are fakes I saw one um, in an antique store, mm, same antique store as a matter of fact, the, the, the guy that I got that cabinet for uh, John's AK-145, it was in a booth there and it was, it looked 
great, but you started looking at it and you thought, ah, there's something not quite right about this. And I looked it up and sure enough it was a it was a fake. The people that had the booth had no idea, but it was it was not a real one. These of course use uh, an internal horn where they have the the reproducer actually passes sound through this chamber. This is a reproduction grill cloth by the way. I it it didn't have any grill cloth in it when I bought it. Other than that, in very good very good condition. Quite pleased with it. So that's my silver tone phonograph. I guess you I don't know what else to call it. Next video we'll get back to the radios. And with that, thanks for watching. More radios on the way.